Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for our presentation. We are proud to present our next speaker, Mark DePasquale, with Solace. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. That is loud. All right, I'm Mark from Solace. I'm a developer advocate. And in today's talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about why organizations are becoming event driven. I'll then introduce the concept of an event mesh and talk a little bit about how that enables integration with AWS services such as Lambda. Um, so first, as part of the why, um, it's really our, our, our lives in, in the world is event driven. So my life kind of coming here on the trip to AWS reInvent, I used my credit card several times. And so when I swiped my card or tapped my card, that is indeed an event. So from a business perspective, um, events have mean several things in the business context. So of course, they'll check to make sure I have the available credit to, make, to authorize my transaction. A lot of banks will do uh, fraud detection in real time. But what we're also seeing um, customers do is offer in-store op offers and things to make the customer experience better. Um, so they might do things like what we have one customer doing is when you go to the terminal and go to pay with your credit card, um, it will say, hey, do you want to use your points um, to pay for this purchase, or do you want to charge it to your card itself? Uh, another example, and luckily my flight was actually not delayed on the way here, but if it was, you might have a flight is delayed event, and from that event, hopefully you would notify me as the passenger that my flight is delayed, but also if I'm in the air and I'm going to miss my connection and the airline knows, you know, hopefully they'll rebook my missed connection so I can make it to my destination, or even uh, a lot of times I stay at a partner hotel um, of my airline, so it would be nice if the airline knew, like, hey, Mark's not going to make it to Las Vegas until 2 AM. Maybe I should tell his hotel, like, don't give his room to somebody else. He'll be there eventually. And hopefully, at that point, the hotel might, might know I'm having maybe not the best day and do something nice uh, for me as well. And then one last thing, because I think you're getting the idea here. When I get to a hotel, a lot of hotels require you to tap your card when you get into the elevator. Um, so with the whole Internet of Things, as you've seen around the quad here, um, elevators are also connected things, and so that tap is an event, and there are several different things that businesses can do from that event. Obviously, they're going to validate that I have access uh, to the floor that I want to go to, but maybe, just maybe I was at the bar last night, and when I tap my card and I'm going to my room, they might say, hey, um, we'll give you a buy one, get one free offer, like push notification to my phone to incentivize me to spend more money at the bar, or maybe send me a personalized message and say, hey, congratulations on making all that money in blackjack earlier. Um, make me feel better, um, be loyal to the brand, and increase my awareness. Um, so all of these things, like a better customer experience and instant um, gratification that customers now want, uh, like I order a package on Amazon, I want it as soon as possible. These are reasons why organizations are becoming event-driven and processing events in real time. So you know, why do we care as developers and architects it's obviously our job from a technical perspective, because this was all about like business side of things, but from a technical perspective, we need to process those events and get them where they need to be, when they need to be there. So from a technical pers perspective, an event is really a message um, sent by an application or device, um, and it usually signals a change in state. But of course, there's several challenges that we run into uh, as the technical folks trying to implement this. And the first is that we have many distributed environments. Um, of course, we have on-premise on data centers, but we also have uh, items in the, or items, applications running in the cloud, maybe multiple regions around the globe, or even other environments. And of course, we have a lot of technologies. I think I heard him say in the keynote yesterday, there now is more than 175 AWS services that we all know and love. Well, maybe we know some of them. There's tons of them now. Um, hundreds of programming languages and frameworks, and of course, a lot of our applications speak different protocols and are written in different languages and all the other technologies that our enterprises are using. So all of these different things are making really real-time event distribution across all of these technologies harder and harder. So of course, you could stitch it all together point to point, but that is obviously a really fragile way to do it, and it doesn't scale. So the questions we have is how do you achieve this uniform connectivity um, generally across all your applications that are in different locations, speaking different protocols, written in different languages, and how do you scale and manage and secure that? And as the talk uh, title hinted at, 
The answer to that is using an event mesh as your data plane. So an event mesh is a data distribution layer in, in your architecture um, that allows events produced in, any, in one location to be consumed in any other location. Um, and it's based on interconnected event brokers. So you would deploy an event broker in each environment um, where you have applications that want to stream events, connect them together to form your mesh, and then um, the event mesh will provide for dynamic message routing so it only sends events where they need to go and not where they don't need to be. And it provides for protocol translation. So you can have one application speaking one protocol, another, another speaking another, and they can still receive the events. So as an example, I have this red event stream that might be sent by an on-premise application that uses the JMS API. It sends it into the event broker. And in the cloud, I might have a microservice that says, hey, I'm interested in that red event stream. And so in real time, the event mesh it will route those events to the microservice in that region. And then because a lot of times event-driven applications use the publish subscribe pattern, I can have another application in a different cloud region that says, I want that same red event stream, send me those events as well. And of course, going the other way, you can produce um, event streams in the cloud and send them to your applications on premise or in other regions as well. So it really helps you send events anywhere they need to be from wherever they're produced. And so just to give you a better idea of where it fits in your IT infrastructure, um, if you're familiar with service mesh, it's kind of being embraced as the infrastructure layer to make communication flex flexible and reliable for your request reply synchronous um, services. So event mesh is doing the same for event driven and it allows you to use communication patterns such as publish subscribe. Um, so together, like the event mesh and the service mesh really complement each other and give you the ability to use all the communication patterns that you need uh, to be real time. And so some of our customers are using this for a lot of different use cases. These are four of the main ones that we see. Uh, a lot of them are, using, are doing more than one of these as well. So if connecting and, and choreographing microservices, uh, pushing events, from on-premise to the cloud, so both for cloud migration, but also for cloud bursting. I think last weekend was Black Friday, um, so a lot of retailers, for example, don't have maybe the on-premise um, compute power to process all those transactions, so they would push some of those to the cloud just for the weekend to process their sales. Or as you've seen all over the quad, enabling smart IoT um, connected Internet of Things, so you have your devices speaking a protocol such as MQTT, um, going into the mesh, but then the, your backend developers are used to using uh, AMQP or JMS to process those events, and so the event mesh allows you to, allows your developers to use the technologies that they're familiar with to get the job done in a faster manner. And then lastly, enabling data as a service. So it's not usually just your line of business that's trying to become real time, but also other verticals in your business, or even some of your partners, so you can enable data streaming in real time to your partners, so maybe instead of having REST APIs that they constantly pull and check for updates every 10 seconds, you just send events as they happen in real time. And so I'm gonna show a little bit of a demo to show the dynamic message routing. So let's see here. So for AWS reInvent, I set up this event mesh. Um, so I said the event mesh is really a layer in your architecture, so us at Solus actually provide an implementation of that event mesh, and that's what you're seeing here in Solus Cloud. Um, so I deployed in a, our brokers and interconnected them in three different AWS regions, um, one in Singapore, one in Ohio, and one in Ireland. Um, so for this demo, we essentially have, um, we're simulating MQTT-connected buses in Singapore, and so of course those buses are connecting to the Singapore broker, sending in um, updates in real time via MQTT, um, I am in the United States, obviously, so I'm going to be connecting into uh, Ohio. Um, and so I have this map here. And so what this application allows me to do, it doesn't speak MQTT. It's using a JavaScript library. And I'm basically subscribing to an area of the map. Right now, I'm subscribing to the ocean. So luckily, there's no bu buses in the ocean right now giving me updates. But in real time, if I say, you know what, I want to move the subscription. I actually care about this area here and make it a little bit bigger. In real time, when I say I want this area, we subscribe, the event mesh says, hey, 
Mark wants those events from those buses in that area, and we start routing dynamically those events from Singapore um, to the Ohio broker so I can get them in my application. And of course, if I decide to change my subscription to like a smaller area, still dynamically in real time, um, you'll see the buses start to disappear that are outside of the circle um, because I'm no longer interested in those events. So this really saves and helps you efficiently use your network because I think a lot of times, especially you know, with AWS and with cloud, we kind of think, hey, we have unlimited compute, we have unlimited memory, but we're really running into network bottlenecks. So this allows you to efficiently use your network. Let me switch back here. So that's kind of an introduction to the event mesh. Um, but now just to talk a little bit about how this works with AWS services. Um, so the Solace event mesh, we essentially have a, a no-code integration solution that is deployed via cloud formation. And so what that allows you to do is have your application speaking AMQP and MQTT using the JMS API or any of these other integrations that Solace has. And so you connect into the event mesh and stream your events. Um, from legacy systems, from new systems. And the CloudFormation um, deployment allows services such as SQS, SNS, Kinesis, and Lambda to receive those events and really get them into your, into your AWS infrastructure. And obviously here, this is a, only a subset of the events, but Lambda and Kinesis are really kind of entry points right, to AWS. So you can take the events from there and put them into Dynamo or whatever data store you would like and do your processing from there. So in a little bit more detail on that, so essentially how this works, um, we have the Solus event mesh in that green circle, and we have the API gateway there in red. Um, the CloudFormation template will actually deploy a broker in your VPC. It will configure a queue, and it will configure an endpoint, and then essentially all you have to do is choose what event streams that you want uh, to consume and be delivered. And it also will configure the API gateway for you and set up um, the ability to call like whatever Amazon resource, whether it be an SQS queue or in this case a Lambda function that you want to use. And so I'm just gonna show this as well. All right, so thinking a little bit about that same uh, bus demo that I just showed, um, essentially what I did is it took about 10 minutes for the cloud, cloud formation to de deploy my broker, which I connected into that mesh and configure the API gateway. And I'm gonna take the data, the, the Lambda function is essentially going to enrich the data and put it into Elasticsearch. So just to show a little bit what the API gateway um, actually looks like, we essentially deploy some resources here, delete, receive, and send. Um, so when a post calls, calls our endpoint there, here, it makes a method request to an integration request, which calls our Lambda function. And let's see. And then our Lambda function is kind of, for those of you familiar with Lambda, it's, it's just a Node.js Lambda function, so nothing super special here. It calls our index handler, which just does some regular processing, um, updates the location and stuff so I can put it um, in the format that Elasticsearch wants to be viewed on the map, um, and enriches it and then posts it to Elasticsearch. And so the gateway will actually take the output of that synchronous Lambda um, function and spit it back out onto the event mesh. So any other applications could actually consume that as a stream as well to make sure things are being properly processed. <clears throat> so right now, if I look at my Kibana dashboard, I actually have no events in the last 15 minutes um, because I need to configure the events that I want to be consumed. So if I go into Solace here, and this is my queue, so remember we have this kind of infrastructure here. So this queue is the key to attracting what events, what event streams I want to deliver into my AWS uh, services. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some subscriptions here. So first I'll subscribe to uh, bus 1024, and so we have a hierarchical um, topic structure that allows you to use wildcarding and um, choose really the exact events that you want. 
So now if I go back to Cabana, hopefully we now see the events start to come in. Yeah, so now within the last 15 minutes, we are now getting the stream of events specifically for bus 1024 and bus 1025. Um, and I can see here now, I can start to um, see historical information about where my buses have been, do my analytics and things like that. So the, the nice thing about the event-driven architecture is initially we had this application, which might have been our initial requirements. So we had our buses publishing information. We wanted to see where they were in real time. And now I was able to expand as my requirements changed and I needed other, I needed to do other things to meet my business needs. Because of an event-driven architecture kind of decouples those applications, I was able to add all of this and keep using, reusing the data streams that are already flowing across the event mesh, um, basically wherever I want to, so whether it's in Ohio, whether it's in Singapore, whether it's in Ireland, um, I can get those event streams and, and kind of expand on my architecture. So let's, that was the demo I just did. So I wanna thank you guys for coming to the session. Um, Solace does have a booth at the Venetian. It's booth 3713, so please stop by if you have any questions. Um, we'll be hanging around myself and Andrew in the Solace shirt back here can help answer any questions you have about the event mesh. But definitely think about you know, your event-driven um, kind of journey, what you guys are trying to do, and let us know if you have any questions and how we can help. Thank you.